we're back. Um, we are going to make a wonderful, simple, elegant dish. And nothing says fall more than Minnesota locally harvested zucchini, squash, sweet potatoes. And nothing gives that fall a little bit of a spice more than Moroccan couscous. So this is a, we're going to make a vegetarian couscous. And this is really very, very simple. Um, the first thing, you look at this Frankenstein vessel. No, no babies have ever been cooked in this vessel. Uh, so you have the, the pot. Traditionally, what happens is that you develop some steamed water, rose water in here. Then you put this on top. There's a cheesecloth out there. You put the couscous in there. And then you find one of your 17 children's to come in all day long and roll that raw couscous. I freaking hated it as a child. I mean, when my mom made couscous, oh my God, my hands were like raw from rolling it. So it's, you steam it, so you let the steam come up and we couldn't use any gloves. I don't think there were any gloves in Morocco, quite honestly. I don't think they still have them. But that's a different story. And just keep rolling it. And at the end, and there was another part where the couscous vegetables and, and the lamb and the chicken and all that stuff was happening. And this beautiful fluffy couscous would go underneath and all these wonderful vegetables and meats would go on top of it. Well, A, who has the time for that? B, most people don't have this. So what I, what I did with this uh, vessel is recreate, reinvent the wheel. My mom is probably not going to be very happy. This is your typical couscous you'll find in the store. Okay? It's really already cooked and all you have to do is follow the direction in the box. Don't. That box is a liar. It doesn't tell the truth. You're going to follow our directions. So we're going to do this and so um, we're going to add hot water to this. We're going to put saran wrap over it for two, three minutes. Then we're going to uncover it and we're going to fluff it with a fork. And then we got to make sure it's the right amount of water. You need to put less water than what you need. So once we fluff that couscous and we're going to do it together, I'm going to put it in this vessel on the cheesecloth and let all, <coughs> excuse me, all those vegetables and all that stuff that I'm cooking in there, steam it up and flavor it. If you don't have that at home, it's okay. You don't have to do that. Once your couscous is done, you set it aside. It's important that the couscous is not hot. It's important that the couscous is the first thing you make and you let it sit at room temperature so it almost dries a little bit and it, and it is almost cool. Because once we put the broth on it, if it's hot, it's going to turn into Moroccan grits. If it's cool, it's going to absorb those flavors. It's going to have that really wonderful grainy texture and make for a beautiful dish. So, if you have this, great. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. If you don't have it, so I'm going to assume you don't have it, we're going to do as we're going to pretend that you don't have it and we're going to do it without it. So the first thing I'm going to do, follow me wifey, I'm going to go get the water. And we're going to add some very, very hot water to, so if you see right here, I'm adding enough water, that's it. This is probably half of what the box says. So I have four cups in here of couscous and I have two cups of very, very hot water. Okay. How is that going to cook? How is that? What's going to happen? Well, it cooks because I'm going to use saran wrap that I asked my sous chef to get earlier, but that didn't happen. <laughs> so I'm going to get some. Where's FEMA? In the pantry. You know, you gotta do your job. Uh, I'm gonna get this baby right here and I'm gonna let it steam and we're gonna come back to this. Beautifully 
beautifully steamed. So I have barely, I have, it's a two to one. Couscous, forget the box. And remember FEMA, couscous to water. The whole water has to be extremely hot. I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to get my couscous here, my pot, whatever pot you have that you make a soup in, going. Really hot. I'm going to add around four tablespoons of oil, not olive oil, you know my rule on olive oil. And I'm going to, a high smoking, uh, high smoking point oil. I'm going to add four tablespoons of garlic. One whole red onion, and I'm cooking my garlic and my onion together. There is a reason for that. I want to get that flavor out. Excuse the noise. I want to get the onions translucent, but I don't want them fully caramelized because I still want the texture in the couscous. Both of them in here. And we're gonna mix them up nicely. This is an all aluminum pot, so it goes really, really fast. If you could smell this, it'll be beautiful. So, traditionally, what I would do in here is I would add, at this point, arisa. Arisa, and we're gonna share the recipe with you, is tomato paste, garlic, peppers, cayenne, paprika, cumin. It's beautiful. No, this is tatu, tatuka. We need to get the arisa. Not doing your job. Um, so, oh no, that was Arisa. You did a good job. So traditionally I do it in here and I'll cook it off of the garlic and onions. But I don't want to do that because I'm making more broth than I need. I'm going to flavor my couscous at the end with Arisa because I'm going to have a lot of soup left. And I want to take that leftover tomorrow I'm gonna blend everything together. I'm gonna scorch some cream, and I'm gonna make a creamy cinnamon honey vegetable squash soup. Now, if I had the arisa in there, that will that won't work. So I'm doubling doubling up. I'm making my dinner for tonight, and I'm already thinking of my dinner for tomorrow. You like that, honey? Is that a good dish? Good. So I'm gonna set my arisa aside. My onions are garlic. It's beautiful, and I'm gonna start with the hardiest vegetables I had, carrots. So right now I have around three cups of carrots, skin on. So uh, flavor, nutrition is all in the skin. Sorry, but please stop taking the skin off the carrot. Stop taking the skin off almost everything. Squash, I mean zucchini and squash, look at this. Beautiful butternut. That has the skin off because you don't want to do that. Sweet potatoes, skin on. I want to keep all of that beautifully in there. So what I'm doing right now is incorporating my onions, my carrots, and my garlic. Couscous wants me back. So I'm going to take that couscous that we just did. And I want you to see, just the, the, the right amount of water makes the couscous nice mushy and not dry. I don't have any salt. I don't have any oil. I don't have anything in there. I want this to be as bland as you possibly can get. The other piece, if you make too much couscous, you set it aside, you warm some milk, add some raisins, a little honey, and you have the best breakfast in the world. So this is what we used to do with the couscous. We would fluff it up as kids, but we're talking about raw couscous, which takes hours to fluff up, and we, we will utilize the steam from underneath to heat it up, and you get your hands nice and burned. And trust me, in Morocco, it's not 30 degrees below. We don't need the heat. So you see how, look how beautiful it is. So we're gonna set this aside, and now we're gonna keep it uncovered. And every once in a while, I'm just gonna come with my fork and fluff it up. Because the bottom is hotter than the top, it steams, and I wanna constantly separate it. Uh, can you come and show them what's inside there, please? In here? See that? 
That's all caramelizing. Now we're going to add my sweet potato. And what I'm doing with vegetables, I'm adding starch, texture, sweetness, flavors, aroma. So it's the right combinations. Um, here you go. This is going to cook nicely. I'm going to add some of my beautiful Minnesota butternut squash. Mix it again. I just what I'm trying to do is create that coating around each vegetable so I'm not boiling the vegetable. So I'm getting all the natural sugars and eliminating all the acidity in the, in the vegetables out. And at this point, it's a matter of adding everything else. Zucchini and squash. I want the zucchini and squash to fall apart. And the reason I want to do that is because I want that to thicken my, my broth. I have some beautiful vegetable stock out here that I'm going to add to this and let it cook. But before I do that, chickpeas. There is no salt, there is no pepper yet. And stop. So you can make vegetable stock. My favorite way of doing it is taking carrots, celery, and onions. I'm not making a consomme, so I don't want that to be perfectly clear. I'm making a broth. So I want to roast those vegetables. Once they're beautifully roasted, I boil them, I strain that, and it becomes my stock. Or just buy some beautiful organic vegetable stuff. It does the trick very, very well. There's plenty out there on the market that is very good. But please buy it flavor neutral, meaning all it should have is vegetables, no spice, no salt, nothing. You need to be able to control that dish. So we're going to boil this for a good 40 minutes. Okay? While that's boiling, here's what we're going to do. You, now, if you have this, great. If you don't have it, it works just as fine. We're going to take our couscous and we're going to put it right here. There's a cheesecloth underneath. And if you, if you want to see on the bottom, those tiny little holes, the steam is going to flavorize this beautiful couscous. So this is not how my mom wanted me to do it. My mom wanted me to roll it by hand. But guess what, mom? I don't have eight hours. So we're going to, and if you don't have this, again, the couscous here, just do your, leave your couscous aside, and we'll finish it together. So we're going to let this thing work. Every once in a while, I'm going to come in with my fingers and just fluff up my couscous. Fluff the couscous up. And we'll see you back in 30, 40 minutes to finish this beautiful dish. My wife's just lift it up, son. Here you go. See that? That's working. Okay, go back again. Go back. Look at this. This is going to warm your soul. It's going to warm your heart. It's going to get your libido way up there. I'll see you in 30, 40 minutes. Welcome back. I wish you could smell what I smell. Mm, the Mediterranean smells, the fall leaves of Minnesota all at the same time. I, I just was reminded, because, can you see this board out here, this beautiful board? My buddy, who is the executive chef for Levy uh, at Target Center, who is my partner in crime during the games, I make these beautiful boards. I want to shout out to him. Thank you for this awesome board. As you can see right here, our couscous uh, has been picking up some of that steam and some of that flavor. Like I said, this is not necessary. You don't need to have this, but we had it. And obviously, if you have it, 
you put it in the begin you put it in the beginning, then you take it out and you put it towards the end, otherwise it will overcook the couscous. So it's just a couple minutes. And so we got our garlic, we got our onions sauteed, we introduced all our beautiful vegetables. I added some broccoli and pea pods at the end so I don't overcook them, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna take my beautiful, you can see right here, this is all that flavor from underneath, all that steam that's getting all that squash and everything is right there. I'm just gonna taste for salt. Now, I don't have any spices in here, I don't have anything else. All, all, I'm, all I've done in here is create this incredible broth and with these, with these beautiful vegetables. And the reason I like to add the salt towards the end in here is because a lot of these wonderful vegetables, which are hearty, release a lot of salt and sugar. It really needs very little. I mean, I'm probably gonna say for this whole thing, maybe one tablespoon, that's it. So my salt is there. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. And I'm gonna finish this with some raisins. So the raisins at the end are there for really, you know, some Moroccans use both raisins and apricot. I think that's too much, especially given that we have some squash. It's, there's too much sweetness in there. But, and also given that I want to try and create a different dish, I'm going to get my couscous right here. See how fluffy it is? Look, it almost looks like a grain. It should not be mushy. It's, uh, you know, it's warm but not hot. So this is my couscous. And I'm gonna get a beautiful um, scoop of vegetables without the broth, just right here. Look at that. I'm gonna get another one with the broth. Look, okay. they're all mijoting out there, meaning they're all See how this is picking all that beautiful? Now all that stuff is gonna get soaked up. I'm gonna get a little dried and hydrated pomegranate, optional, cilantro, optional. This is couscous and vegetables by itself. It truly does not need anything. This is now Moroccan couscous with arisa. This is just going to get in there, cumin, paprika, cayenne, saffron, garlic, roasted peppers, tomato paste. This is gonna just bring up those incredible flavors. Tomorrow, I'm gonna take the leftovers in here. I'm gonna blend it. I'm gonna scorch some cream, flavor it with a little honey and cinnamon, and I'm gonna have a cream of vegetable fall cinnamon soup. Bon appétit, until next time, enjoy.